All right, a labor movement icon is dead. Uh, Richard Trumpka uh, dying at age 72. We're told uh, he died of a heart attack. Uh, some officials at the AFL-CIO had got word of this uh, late Wednesday night, early this morning. Uh, but be that as it may, this only occurs a couple of weeks after President uh, Biden had appointed his son, uh, Richard Trumpka Jr., uh, to be an attorney focused on consumer policy uh, in the administration and to help, uh, you know, trigger employment opportunities for all union types across the country. Uh, Trumpka was a very, very big supporter of President Biden and was able to galvanize the union vote in what was a very close race, particularly in some of the battleground states. Uh, and he often thanked Trump got for uh, bringing out that man and woman power, largely labor uh, movement power, uh, on the president's behalf. Uh, again, we don't know much more, but the accolades are coming in from those on the left and right part of the aisle. Uh, even critics of the afl leader said he was a very strong advocate for his people, never gave up on them. Uh, Charles Payne back with us now on this. Uh, Charles, for... Uh, if you think about for the labor movement, whatever people's views on unions and all, um, this is a huge loss. It is a monumental loss. Uh, and you said it, Neil. Uh, you just had to admire the man, period. Um, no matter what side of the aisle you were on, your thoughts about unions, uh, it just I don't think they, they've had a more passionate, uh, determined leader uh, ever. I, really, it's, it's just, you know, of course, you... you done many interviews with him. His passion was there. Uh, uh, he would hold the Democrats' feet to the fire. There were times I, I even saw him sort of, you know, go lurch toward the right on certain issues. And right. I, I even kind of wish they had gone even there more. But yeah, uh, just such a passion. He was a warrior for, for the union and cause. And, uh, you know, listen, the, there are things that you look at union, for instance, we know the, the membership had been drifting. Although last year, 10.8% uh, was the highest number since uh, 2016. That started to turn around for them. Uh, certain occupations, obviously, uh, uh, the unions uh, make so much more, the workers make so much more money than, than non-union workers. Construction is one, uh, at weekly $1,200 versus $830. Uh, protective services, $1,258 a week versus $800 for non-union workers. So, uh, you know, there were certainly some, some things that, that Richard Trump could, could certainly brag about, uh, that he used as a, as a way to try to woo other folks into unions. Uh, the, but, you know, ultimately, uh, this is a huge blow. It's a huge blow for, for the unions. I think it's a huge blow for the country. Uh, and again, it's not whether you like unions or not. You just want to have a strong voice on either side of a, strong, of a major political topic, in this case, unions and, and, and the workers' fate. You know, when you think about it, too, Charles, uh, when he was pushing uh, the candidacy of Joe Biden without an outright endorsement when it was still a crowded field. His message was, uh, whoever I do ultimately support, it better be a very pro-union candidate. Uh, and Joe Biden uh, went there and then some to say that a lot of the jobs that were being gained, they better be union jobs. He, he was unabashed about it. And that really was coming from Trump himself, is that if I'm going to, you know, get this manpower galvanized on your behalf, uh, you know, you better return the favor here and, and, and be focused on union jobs, not just jobs, union jobs. Um, that, that was his goal, and that extended to the White House. It's also extended to policy, uh, particularly when it comes to federal contracting yeah. and a lot of these, you know, you know the solar industry, it's, it will all be, quote, unquote, good union jobs or no jobs at all. So uh, there's no doubt uh, Richard Trump, is, uh, you know, he played an important role in the, in the election uh, and President Biden understood that, understands that. And uh, he makes it pretty clear. No, there's no equivocating there. No one's trying to hide an agenda. It's right out there front for you. This is what we're trying to achieve. So, uh, you know, listen, I'm more of a free markets person, but I absolutely 1 million percent respect where Richard Trumpka was coming from. And I admire greatly uh, the amount of passion that he put into his cause. You know, I know you've talked to him as well, Charles, and you think about it, there was a guy who would come on anywhere and everywhere to, to you know, to express the union cause. And I think one thing that it was in his favor as well, he was a very likable guy. Whatever your views on unions, he was funny, had a very, very good sense of humor. Um, and it would, would, would uh, cool, heated exchanges down when he would 
with a one-liner or a zinger say, all right, well, I'll forgive yeah. you on your ignorance there um, and, and, and proceed to the rake over the coals. But he could take it and dish it out, which is rare on, on, on you know, of anyone in power today, corporate or political or otherwise. Uh, I think that's one yeah. thing we'll, we'll look back at. And, and I appreciate his plain speak. I mean, listen, we have so many people who come on and they're coached up and they know their oh. first five answers, no matter what the heck the question is. And I'm pulling my hair out like, you know, I don't know who coached you, but they did you a disservice and they did the audience a disservice. No one coached Richard Trumpka. He spoke from the heart. He did indeed. Uh, Charles, thank you very much for sticking around to offer your insight on it. that. Again, Richard Trumpka, the leader of the AFL-CIO for the better part of a decade, a lawyer by training, but uh, driven by the passion for the labor movement. He assumed control of the AFL-CIO while membership was bleeding. Um, he met with President Trump, Republican presidents, Democratic presidents. For a while, he was very, very positive to some of the Trump initiatives to help out manufacturing and some of the trade deals he said were lopsided. But in fact, uh, just a few weeks ago, he was arguing about the lopsided, the lopsided nature of trade deals that hurt union men and women. That did not extend, though, to supporting President Trump. Uh, but he did like the guy. And uh, they were oftentimes meeting, finding common ground on some issues. Not all the time, but some of the time, which these days is remarkable if it happens any time. Richard Trump gone at 72.